In the bonding unit, in the advanced section, I told you about how the formation of ionic compound is really achieved through a series of steps. Those series of steps are called the reaction mechanism. Okay, so now here's another reaction mechanism, or first, let's take a look at a certain reaction. Uh, NO2 plus CO actually makes NO plus CO2, but, you know, it's not necessarily likely that that collision occurs in the atmosphere to form these two. What can happen is that a different series of reactions could actually be done in order to get this net equation. That's going to be called the reaction mechanism. Now, let's say somebody tells you, you know what, here's your equation and here's the rate law for it. We actually know the rate law for that equation. It equals rate equals K times the concentration of the NO2 and it's squared. It was experimentally determined. If you're given a reaction mechanism, this can tell you a lot about how it actually works, and how it actually works can tell you a lot about the rate law as well. Watch. NO2 plus NO2, those two molecules can collide in the atmosphere to form nitrogen trioxide and nitrogen monoxide. The nitrogen trioxide can then react with carbon monoxide to form NO2 and CO2. You know, if you add these two equations together, just like we did in Hess's law in the energy unit, you'll notice that NO3s will cancel here, and an NO2 will cancel with an NO2, and you'll get this plus this makes this plus this, and that's the net reaction. So, is this a possible reaction mechanism for this reaction here? Yes, it is, so far, because we can take all the equations, in this case two of them, add them together to get the net equation. Cool. Now, but here's the second thing that must be obeyed in order for this to be a possible reaction mechanism. This must be the rate law for the rate determining step. Now, the rate determining step is the slowest step. You know, you can only go usually as fast as the slowest step of a reaction. Some slow steps take a long time, but the other ones occur lightning fast. And so the reaction time, the time it takes for the reaction to occur, is going to be based on the slowest step. So somebody tells you that this first step is a slow step and the second one is a fast step. The rate determining step is the slow step. You can write the rate law for a rate determining step by looking at the molecules that are colliding to form the products. You can't do that with the net equation, so all the equations so far that we work with, you can't actually write the rate law just by looking at the equation. You have to experimentally determine the order. Now, we know that, but here, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is look at what we call the molecularity. This is a bimolecular reaction. If there was one reactant, it would be called unimolecular. If there was three reactants, it would be called termolecular. But those are very highly unlikely reactions, termoleculars, because three molecules would have to collide with the proper orientation at one time in order to be able to form products. Two molecules, more likely to do it. One, it's easy to be able to form products. Now, here's the thing. Since this is the slow step, its rate law is actually just written as NO, the rate equals K, times NO2 squared. Well, if that's the rate determining step, the rate determining step's rate law is the rate law for the overall reaction. Now, their overall reaction, I told you, does have that rate law. This is the rate law right here for the rate determining step, so this is what we call a proper reaction mechanism. One, the mechanism adds together to give the net equation Two, the rate law for the rate determining step, which we just determined by looking at the reactants and writing it, rate equals K times the concentration of NO2 squared, is the rate law for that reaction, so it's a viable reaction mechanism. Now, by the way, another thing, because NO3 right here was present in that reaction, formed here, and then present here to react with, but in the net reaction isn't found. It's called an intermediate because it's formed and then used up. It's an intermediate chemical. 